Part one was merely an amused bouche. There is so much more broad content to devour. On top of being one of cricket's greatest tail enders, which is kind of an insult, but good, Broad is also one of the great time wasters of cricket. And being Broad, he's found incredible new ways to do it. Like when England were in danger of losing a series to Sri Lanka at home in 2014, and at drinks in the last session, Sri Lanka needed two more wickets to win the series. So Stuart Broad left the ground to go to the toilet. We can only assume he was doing that because there's no other reason for him to leave the ground. And you might be thinking, well, when you've got to go, you've got to go. But when Broad left the ground, he had only faced four balls. He'd been batting for less than five overs. I'm not sure he really took minutes out of the game, but what an effort to do that. England still lost. And it's not always that he's wasting time at the end of a test match. He did it in Adelaide in 2014 when he came out to face Mitchell Johnson and spent an absolute eternity getting something shiny on the sight screen fixed before his first ball. He was so exact and demanding and it went on for a long time. How long? Well, he made a golden duck, so he was dismissed first ball, and yet his innings still took six minutes. It felt like the entire cricket world was watching Broad not bat, and it was hilarious. And of course, when he finally did face up, th this is what happened. Broad hopped outside the line of the ball and lost his leg stump, the perfect punchline to an incredible setup. Perhaps one of my favorites was a very bizarre moment in some ways. In Trent Bridge 2013, day five, England were in front all test and somehow Australia were edging towards a fairly unlikely victory nine wickets down on the fifth morning. James Pattinson was helping Brad Haddon and lunch was delayed because the amount of wickets had been fallen. So now as the new lunch was approaching, England wanted to regroup and bowl as little overs as possible. And so Stuart Broad took off his shoe mid over. Yeah, it's probably one of the weirder bits of time wasting I've ever seen. England only needed one wicket to win. The England fans were confused Australian fans were booing Broad, and the incredible thing is that it doesn't even stop the next over. It had absolutely no effect on the game at all, and England actually did go on to win that one. And it's not even in the 10 oddest things Broad has ever done at Trent Bridge. It's probably not even the biggest five he's done at Trent Bridge against Australia. In fact, something bigger and odder happened that very test. Stuart Broad did not walk when he edged the ball to slip. And let's focus on walking. Most professional cricketers, well, don't walk. And it seemed like everyone had accepted the players don't walk anymore. But fuck my eyeballs out. Stuart Broad's edge changed everything. But we do need to start by looking at the entire issue. By this point, Ashton Agar was the world's favourite teenage number 11 after he almost made 100 batting there. He was at this point a wide-eyed cricket ingenue that everyone, very much including the English fans, was absolutely in love with. And he was bowling to Stuart Broad. His left arm orthodox hits a foot mark. The ball turns in sharply as Broad plays a loose back foot shot. The ball takes the outside edge and heads to slip. And generally, though not every time, and if a player does hit the ball to slip, more often than not, they walk. But despite the fact that many say he edged the ball to slip, the actual edge takes a bit of Brad Haddon's glove before it gets there. And it doesn't appear like that big of a deviation either. You could argue the moral ethics of this all day long. If someone knows they've edged behind, does it matter if it goes to slip or the wicket keeper if they don't walk? If Haddon takes that catch and Broad doesn't walk, no one has any problem with it. The fact that Haddon drops the catch and ends up at slip means everyone has a problem with it. And being that it happened with Australia, the country that basically invented not walking, they took it with good humor and completely accepted Broad's cunning cricket. Oh except for the fact that they didn't do that, and they completely and utterly lost their minds as a cricket culture. And this kind of nonsensical thinking is not just an Australian thing, of course. England players have been fined and admitted to ball tampering before, but when Australia were caught ball tampering, they acted like it had almost never happened before. But usually this sort of stuff kind of stays with the ex-player pundits and maybe opinion writers saying stupid things and fans yelling at each other online. That's the way that cricket should be. But then Darren Lehman, then Australian coach, said this, certainly our players haven't forgotten. They're calling him everything under the sun as they go past. I hope the Australian public do the same thing because this was just blatant cheating. I don't advocate walking, but when you hit it to first slip, it's pretty hard. From my point of view, I just hope the Australian public give it to him right from the word go for the whole summer, and I hope he cries and goes home. 
We could unpack all of that, or we could just remember the fact that Darren Lehman was once suspended for a recent incident and coached a team that was actually cheating. And I think the important thing to remember here is that walking or not walking is fine until it might cost your team in a very close game. In this case, Australia as a cricket culture, and even beyond their cricket culture, did an incredible job of being very upset at the thing that they do all the time. There is something wrong in the cricket world, and while it may not be a conspiracy, there does seem to be a movement towards leaving more grass on the wicket, and thusly, the global batting average has dropped. If a similar thing has happened to you in your personal life, try Manscaped. Their Lawnmower 4.0 will help you trim any unwanted pubic grass. And once your downstairs track is taken care of, you can also use Manscaped's liquid formulations. So before heading outside, use the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant to stay cool in the heat. And if you've been playing too many games recently and you need some help with your strip, why don't you go and get their Crop Reviver? I think I may possibly have taken all of this analogy too far. But the point is, Manscaped sells items that allow you to shave your pubic itch pitch. Use the code REDINCA, all one word, which is the name of my podcast, and you can get a 20% discount and free worldwide shipping while you curate your special strip like a team of sweaty men hoping it doesn't rain. The entire thing was so monumentally stupid, but the fact that Lehman hung onto it so much and wanted it to keep going, that's, it's almost heroic. So step forward the state of Queensland, also known as New Texas, and they decided that they wouldn't let this die. They ran with this headline. This is a proper grown up paper of sorts. And this is what they actually printed. And of course, Broad went out and took six foot straight away and then walked into the press conference holding the same newspaper. So the next day, the Courier Mail went back with this one. And when Australia won the test, they added this. The entire thing was so bizarre. It was ship posting, but in a newspaper about a cricketer who did a thing that many players also do. But none of this includes the fans who wore Stuart Broad as a ship bloke t-shirts or all the signs. There were so many signs. Us Australians, as a species, collectively, lost our shit. And I know we can make fun of all this, and we should. But at one point, Cricket Australia and the ECB were actually worried because a Facebook page started to suggest that someone should attack Broad. So let's quickly go through all this, right? Did Broad nick the ball? Yes. Did he know he did? Most probably yes. Does that make him a cheat? Well, no, because that is not what the laws of cricket say. And if he's a cheat, that makes almost every modern cricketer a cheat. Did Darren Lehman lose his mind? Yes. Did a team that Darren Lehman coached end up doing far bigger cheating? Yes. Did the ball hit Brad Haddon's gloves? Yes. Did all of Australia get really angry over something their own players do? Yes. You've got to give it to Broad. He made Lehman lose his mind, a newspaper looked like giant idiots, and completely outed us Australians as the reactionary saw losing hypocrites we sadly so often are. Oh, and then a few years later, he added this to a Kane Williamson edge. This is dedication to the art and also proof of just how good he is on Twitter. This whole thing was a big deal, even if it probably shouldn't be. In fact, the biggest controversy of Broad's career probably should be what happened to Kevin Peterson on Twitter. But first, a word on KP. I don't think people remember how good he actually was. His commentary, tweets, controversies, and sadly friendship with Piers Morgan has got people thinking about KP a specific way. But just look at England batters in tests for a minute. You can see pre-World War II, and even just after, England kept finding incredible batters one after the other. But since Ken Barrington, England's not had a single player averaging over 50. The last one who finished his career close was Jeffrey Boycott, who debuted in the early 60s. The next one to get close was KP in the mid-2000s. England spent 40 years looking for a talent as good as him. And let's be honest, there had been many problems with Kevin Peterson in the England camp for some time. But it was 2012 when it all got a bit much. And to start off, there was the at KP Genius Twitter account. After that, there were messages from KP to Morne Morkel on how to dismiss Andrew Strauss with unfriendly terms. And finally, it all vomited out into a public spat, which ended with the best batting talent in 40 years not actually in the team anymore. And Broad certainly wasn't the biggest part of the story. KP was first, second, and third. But, of course Broad was also part of it. And that is because of the KP Genius Twitter account, which was an occasionally funny parody of KP back when Twitter parodies were occasionally a thing. And that's because Broad was one of the players who followed the account. This alone bothered KP, but of course it got a lot worse. Because not only was Broad friends with the man behind the account, but Alex Stewart actually claimed that Broad had access to it. And I have no idea how much of this is true. But it was one of the biggest moments in modern English cricket. Their batting freak, 
being pushed out of the team. And as stupid as it sounds, the Twitter account actually played a fairly big part in all of this. So of course Broad was involved in all of this. Oh, and that thing I showed you before about KP, that was all the England players and their batting averages. This is all the players in Test Cricket with over 3,300 runs. You see this dot all the way down here? This is Stuart Broad. He has made a lot of runs in the incredible amount of tests that he has played. Stuart Broad does bat a lot. Here is the list of the most runs ever scored by players batting number nine or lower. And again, Broad stands out. He is, depending on, I suppose, your definition, the greatest tail ender in the history of the game. I mean, not really, because if he was really, he would move up the order again. But of the guys who aren't that good, who have played a bunch of tests, no one has been better than Broad, I think. I don't know, it's weird. And that's why so much of this video is about his batting. Partly just because Broad's batting is an absolute delight. So much so that this Twitter account has 10,000 followers. And all it really does is tell you if Broad is batting or not. That is because he is must watch TV or must stream or whatever it is. Because of how fun and utterly bizarre his innings are. His shots are just so weird. Sometimes it feels like he's in a different game than everyone else out there. Like he decides how he's gonna play based on shuffle mode. And sometimes he just gets bold without doing anything at all. Like he's glitching. Somehow we made it through Stuart Broad part two. But of course the man has more for us in the final installment.